If you're looking for excitement and fun, there's nothing better than a jaunt into the heart of the city. Join us as we explore downtown La Crosse, Eau Claire, Oshkosh, and Green Bay. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. The bluffs of the Dripless, the banks of the Mississippi, the historic charm of the city. Few places are as beautiful as La Crosse, especially when getting downtown is hassle-free. They've implemented their new 523 parking program, which means there's five parking ramps, two ways to pay, and three hours of free parking, with only a dollar an hour after that. With all the time and money I saved, I can hit the local bakery before meeting up with the mayor to get his perspective on the city. So we brought you some treats from Meringue Bakery. We hear that the chocolate croissant is your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must frequent there. I do, I, I love it there, absolutely. No, it's it's one of those places with just a gem in downtown La Crosse where we have a world-class baker that just happens to be on, on Main Street. And you guys have so much, you have so much of that here, oh, right? Yeah, we do. All of these like yeah, amazing little spots here in downtown La Crosse. Yeah, we're pretty charmed. You know, La Crosse sits on some of the most gorgeous landscapes oh, that yeah. Wisconsin has to offer, but you have done such a great job at integrating that green space into the city as well. It brings a whole nother level of enjoyment to it. What are some of the things that you feel make downtown La Crosse stand out? It's a th thriving, uh, just vibrant, area certainly it's just how everything is all combined together we have our farmers markets right downtown we have uh, all sorts of opportunities for people to take in music we have an arts district that's just you know that's right mm -hmm. at the edge of our downtown people love to live in a downtown area where they have access to all these cool things a lot of that has to do with our recreational opportunities near the downtown you know, the, the waterways, and then certainly our bluffs and all the great biking trails and hiking trails. And all of that is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the downtown. So you can have all of your fantastic restaurant experiences and bar experiences and just hanging out outside and moon tunes, all those different things. You could do all that and then grab your mountain bikes and hit the hills. I think that makes us unique in the state of Wisconsin, just in terms of how compact it all is and, and just the accessibility and the proximity. Well, here we are at the brand new La Crosse Center. Can you tell me what this is all about? Well, we have one of the largest uh, preserved historic districts uh, in Wisconsin, if not the country, for historic downtowns. So we really take pride in that, and that creates a really great atmosphere, a really good place to shop and eat. And it's right outside the front doors of our convention center. So uh, a lot of conventions these days are promoting not only the event, but the city that they're in and it's really a great place where you can do business, you can do what you need to do and within five, 10 minutes, really get away from it all and experience nature and, and what we have to offer. Speaking of experiences, I heard there is a Moon Tunes show tonight. Can you yeah. tell me what that's all about? Yeah, so Moon Tunes is a really great community event, uh, really grassroots effort. Uh, Riverside Park is an absolutely beautiful park right on the shores of the Mississippi River. It's a John Nolan design. We've got a great lawn with a great band shell that's been newly refurbished. When we've got a, a popular act and, and good weather, uh, it's just a sea of people and a really great, great event. Piggy's Restaurant is a well-known establishment here in La Crosse, and I've been hearing so much about it that I can't wait to try this pulled pork sandwich and listen to some moon tunes. Watch this episode plus tons of other exclusive content by downloading the Discover Wisconsin app on any streaming device. Coming up next, Discover Wisconsin scopes out the scene in downtown Eau Claire. We're back checking out Wisconsin downtowns. A little bit quirky, a little bit cool, and tons of recreation, art, and music. I'm here to talk to a few of the locals to find out if what I've heard is true, that Eau Claire is like a mini version of Portland, which still manages to keep up Wisconsin's Midwest pace and kindness. 
So this is my first time to Eau Claire, but I keep hearing about how charming it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> what makes Eau Claire so charming? I think, you know, things like this, public art is pretty much everywhere in our downtown streets uh, between our sculpture tour, this mural project, um, you know, the lights on the trees. We've got art galleries, music left and right, music festivals coming to our area, and then of course our Pablo Center, which is a gem of our downtown that hosts all kinds of performance art. So I've been hearing about the past 10 years and that there's been this big uh, downtown revitalization. Absolutely. What's been going on this past 10 years? Oh my gosh, we've been doing everything. So uh, we're really trying to draw attention to our riverfront. So we added bike trails, we added lights to the bridges, music to the streets, and that's really drawing not only a visitor to our community, but businesses as well. So we have a whole new strip of local businesses that you can find something interesting and new you haven't seen before. Here we are, hanging out at Carson Park. Carson Park. How's your ice cream? It's very good. So what's the what's the food scene? Yeah, it, what's that like? It varies a lot. There's upscale restaurants, but then you've got the like little dives. You've got Corton House, who has two for one burgers, and Ray's has like hot beef sandwiches. Yeah, that's like the classic. <laughs> like if you talk to any person who's like lived in Eau Claire, they're probably gonna tell you to go to Ray's. It sounds like there's a good mix for there everybody. Is. What's it like owning a small business in the, the community around here? It's changed a lot. A lot of cool new businesses are moving in. As you know, new businesses start, like we're able to connect with them and build the relationships. We very much like lean on each other. I mean, a lot of our print revenue is local businesses. And then we try to do whatever we can to help out. We've done like live printing events, so we'll promote their business. Last question I have is, how do I get an Ambient Ink t-shirt like that? I have anything in the trunk? <laughs> I don't have anything in the trunk. Like in the old days? I did like two I days ago. Should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we should start off with Revival Records. What does this place have to do with Eau Claire and the music scene? Yeah, it's kind of like the main place where people buy their records and where they like to kind of give back to artists in a more physical way. And I think that's so important yeah, and so, that's so super cool. cool. So, and I keep hearing about the music scene here in Eau Claire. What makes the music scene here particularly unique? I think it's definitely unique in the quality and quantity. Any day of the week, you could go to any kind of venue. Definitely in the summer, we like to get out um, and have concerts in the park. There's people who busk even. You can go into somebody's basement and listen to incredible music or go to Pablo and see, you know, sit with 1,200 other people and see a world-renowned artist. One thing that I really like about the rivers going through town is there's different parts to get out. Um, you can tube, you can swim, and then along the river, one of the things that's grown has been the, the bike path, running path system. It's just completely exploded. It makes a lot of sense with the flow of the city for commuting, walking, running, biking. We've basically taken some main veins of big trails and interconnected them all throughout the coolest parts of Eau Claire. So uh, it seems like there's a big social side. You mentioned a group run. Yep. You guys do group runs oh, with yeah. Blue Ox. Um, yeah, we, we, our motto is fast or slow, let's go. It's pretty laid back. A lot of people are there for the time after where they grab a drink. Yeah. And a lot of people are there for accountability. All these different activities over the course of all four seasons, you kind of see the same people getting together for different activities. It's that welcoming social spirit, the bonding over shared activities that I think is the essence of Eau Claire. So come join the scene. Wherever you are, whatever you're into, I'm willing to bet you can find your people here. Get the inside scoop on more of your favorite places to visit in Wisconsin by listening to Discover Wisconsin's official podcast, The Cabin. Up next, we're exploring everything Oshkosh here on Discover Wisconsin. Discover Wisconsin is back here in downtown Oshkosh. When you think about Oshkosh, a few things probably come to mind. EAA flights, public enemies, Oshkosh bagosh. But downtown in the last 10 years, a lot has been happening. And if you haven't been paying attention, it's definitely time to take a look again. Bill, why did you decide to make Oshkosh your home? What do you love most about it? 
Um, it is right by the water. There's a river, as you can see behind us, right downtown. There's two beautiful lakes. It's a, a special place because it's so close to so much water. I've noticed that you all have been doing a lot of revitalizing of the downtown, and it looks amazing. Why do you think now is a cool and exciting time to visit Oshkosh? I, I think it's a, it's a great location for a weekend. The uh, watering holes and the restaurants are my favorite. If you're more of a bicycle person, we have trails that go way up north and then come back along the river. You can walk downtown or walk along the shore. Our parks are beautiful. Saturdays are a wonderful day here. We have one of the best farmers markets in the, in the whole state. We close down Main Street. Uh, we have festivals on Main Street. The size of the town, it, it feels like a local town and people are friendly, but there's big enough things where there's a lot to do. There's nothing like a small town with a big city feel. That's exactly what we have here. here in Wagner's Market, a boutique grocery store in downtown Oshkosh. They specialize in sourcing some of the most unique and high quality grocery products. Meat lovers rejoice. This could possibly be the best part of Wagner's. They have over 100 types of brats and you can go on their website at any time and find out what's exactly in the case. Wagner's cares so much about fresh food that they're even growing their own lettuce and herbs underneath the store. As soon as it's picked, minutes later, it's on the shelf. Okay, this is cool. They actually have alligator tail here. Wonder if it tastes like chicken. With over 700 types of beers, they have curated an amazing selection from all over the country. There is no way you won't find something you love here. here at the lanes at the Howard with Jesse from The Bid in downtown Oshkosh. And thank you so much for joining me here today, Jesse. Yeah, thanks for, for joining us here in Oshkosh. We love it so far. Um, tell me, your job must give you a unique insight and deep understanding of Oshkosh. How would you describe Oshkosh to somebody who's never been here before? Um, I think the first word that comes to mind is friendly. Um, no matter when you go into a business or where you go, um, someone's always willing to help you out. Um, and nine times out of 10, when you go into a store, it's like the store owner that's there. But I also went to school here and the college is amazing. And um, I think in the future, it's just a great place to you know, raise a family, it's safe. So what is the core of Oshkosh? How would you define the people, the culture here? What makes it unique? Just the vibrant activity that we have throughout the city. Um, there's always so much to do and so much going on. Um, we have lots of events happening for all ages. Um, it's a really uh, family-friendly town. Um, checking out our, our art scene downtown. We have tons of live music happening throughout the city um, at our local bars and restaurants. There's tons of events happening, the Leech Amphitheater. Um, you're close to the river and the river walk, um, nightlife. So I think it's just a lot of fun. Binge all the Discover Wisconsin episodes from this season on the Discover Wisconsin YouTube channel. Coming up, Discover Wisconsin explores downtown Green Bay. Discover Wisconsin is back and we're taking you on a tour around Titletown. You know, a lot of people forget that Green Bay is on a bay. You've got the waters of the bay and the waters of the Fox River and we're having fun on the Fox right now on the Foxy Paddler. Ready, everybody? Boom, 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 Foxy! So of course the Packers are the quintessential Green Bay thing, but from a food standpoint, Booyah seems to be. Oh, definitely. It's very, as you want to talk about local foods, I mean, you can't get much more local than that. I said, I remember when I was a kid, my dad, you know, the night before the men's club would be at church, they have a keg of beer, they'd be cleaning the vegetables, prepping the bouillon, getting it ready. You know, they do four, couple hundred gallons of bouillon on these picnics. Let's, let's go through the history of this. What is bouillon? Well, bouillon, we always like to call it uh, chicken soup on steroids. It's slow cooked, big cast iron kettles, 
Ours, we cook for about 12 to 16 hours per batch. Everybody makes it different. There is no one recipe you'll find alike. I mean, some people make it with turkey, some make it with turtle. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Turtle? Yep, I've heard people with turtle bouillas. And I'm playing with this because I want to take a bite. Go for it. Mmm. You know, it's rich and light at the same time. There's something to said for it, and I always sort of, I try to sip on a cup of raw the day, at least, if nothing else. It's, it's like a tonic. It's almost gets addicting. <laughs> so we sell a cup here for a dollar, so we tell people that's how we get you hooked. Anybody what are you addicted to? <laughs> Booyah. So to have a place like this in Green Bay, I mean, this is a very unique museum. There's a lot of automotive museums, but this one has a particularly sweet collection. We have a lot of visitors come in, Eric, and the first thing they will say is, we never realized that a place like this could exist in Green Bay, and that's the highest compliment that we can get. But we will never lose sight of what the original intent was, and that was to make the automobile the art. And what really separates our collection from the 275 million vehicles on the road in the U.S. today are the stories. This is Bart Starr's Super Bowl I MVP Corvette. One of one and... From Super Bowl I. Right. It really warms my heart to be able to look down on this great car and remember such a great human being and a great player. Mm-hmm. I had a Mustang GT back in the day and I don't think it went this fast. It went pretty well, though, I would imagine. I have a and, few tickets uh, to attest to it. A car many know only from the movies. <laughs> Back to the future. So, Jill, this is a beautiful space you have here. Thank you. And, of course, it's right on Broadway, which has the farmer's market going on right now. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I've heard from people is that when they set up booths here, sometimes it's almost like they're doing a little pop-up business to see if it'll work, and some have actually grown enough and they've moved into storefronts here on Broadway. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the amount of small businesses that have come into this area and just completely redone the entire downtown is, it makes me so excited to be part of it. Well, it's not, what's nice is a lot of them are so local. You can support local really easily down here. Which is the best thing you can do. It's a win-win. Well, that's good. There's a nice catalytic development here yes. from a great event. Yes, absolutely. And then it allows us to support each other. You want a good glass of wine, you go to M4 next door. Down the street, the Voyager Sourdough is my favorite place for lunch. Like, there's so many to choose from. You have several days' worth of activities to choose from downtown. So this farmer's market is every Wednesday at this time of year. Yeah. But there's a lot of events going on around town, it seems. Oh, and especially during the summertime, between the huge fireworks shows and the Ignite Market and they have different art fairs and children's activities and there's just so much going on for the community to get involved in. That Got a bustle so on fun. the Fox now. Yes, that, yes, absolutely. It's <laughs> great. Exploring new places, meeting new people, experiencing new things. I can think of no place better to get out there and live life to the fullest than Wisconsin's downtowns. Stream Discover Wisconsin anywhere, anytime. Continue the adventure on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Smart TV, Chromecast, and discoverwisconsin.com.